Yes, welcome to Sunday School. I'm so glad that you came virtually to join me. Um, so I'm really excited to explore more of the Big God story with you today. So uh, to start, I have an opening question. I want to know, if you could change into any animal, what would you change into? If I could change into any animal, I think that I would change into a dog because I think dogs are just awesome. All they have to do is is play and eat and sleep, and that sounds like such a great life to live. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking. To, we're going to be turning to Acts nine, and we're going to be talking about a man named Saul. So. Um, this part of the Big God story happened shortly after Jesus rose from the dead and uh, shortly after he rose into heaven. And when that happened, everything changed for the people in Jerusalem. And they got so excited that they started sharing the word of God to everyone, right? And then, but you know, the leaders in Jerusalem, they weren't super happy with that. And so the the leaders there arrested and even killed some of the people who were sharing God's word. But this didn't stop them from sharing that Jesus is God's son and that he rose from the dead. Right? The believers still continued to share this with anyone they could because they knew that everyone could be a part of God's story. Because of this, the believers began to leave Jerusalem and move to other places to share to share more about who Jesus was. Um, when they got to their new homes, when they got to their homes, do you think they stopped telling others the good news about Jesus? That's right, no, they kept telling people everywhere about God's son. The religious leader didn't want this to happen, so they told a man by the name of Saul to arrest believers and bring them back to Jerusalem. Saul thought that Jesus was just a man, not God. So Saul didn't think it was right that people called Jesus God's son. The high priest gave Saul a letter that gave him the right to go to places where Jewish people worship God, arrest them, and bring them back to Jerusalem where they could be thrown in prison or even put to death. Now, on one of Saul's trips to arrest some of these believers in the city of Damascus, something incredible happened. Do you want to know what it was? I do. So Saul was on the road to Damascus when suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And Saul fell to the ground and heard a voice ask, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? The voice was Jesus. Jesus then told Saul to get up and go into, to, into Damascus where he would be told what to do. The men with Saul were shocked. They could see the bright light and they heard a sound coming from the light, but they couldn't see anyone. When the light disappeared and they saw Saul on the ground, they had to help Saul up because he was now blind. They led Saul into the city where he stayed for three days and didn't eat or drink anything. Poor Saul was probably pretty confused and maybe even sad. But in Damascus, there lived a man named Ananias. God came to Ananias one day in a vision and told him to go to Saul and lay his hands on him to bring his sight back. Ananias was confused and he was scared of Saul, right? Because Saul was arresting all of the believers. But God assured Ananias that Saul was a part of, his, of the big God story. So Ananias found Saul and laid hands on him, and God healed Saul. The Bible says that something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes, and Saul could see again. Saul got up and was baptized immediately. Something amazing happened to Saul that day. Instead of going to Damascus and arresting people who preached about Jesus, Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus and began preaching and telling others that God's son changes everything everything. Saul went on to, to be one of, uh, play a very important role um, in the Big God story. You have probably heard him referred to as 
Paul. Because Saul decided to change his name because he himself had changed. People were astonished because they knew who Paul used to be. God used Paul in powerful ways to preach the good news, proving that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. And Paul faced many hardships, but he was filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to spread the message about God's son Jesus. The church was strengthened and increased in numbers, all because God's son changed everything. Paul went on to tell people all across the Roman Empire about Jesus through many letters that he wrote to the churches. Those letters were saved and later became a part of the Bible. Paul met God's son and it changed everything for him. And we can see that God's son changes everything. Paul became a part of the big God story and God invites us to be part of that same story. So today we're going to be doing a craft. So what I want you to do is find something and recycle it. So you can use cardboard, plastic bottles, glass bottles, whatever you can find that you are allowed, with mom and dad's permission, to decorate. So, so I use an A carton. So see, here's my A carton. I kind of ripped it up, right? I ripped, so I had one, two, three little little holes in there and I painted it. I painted it green and I made a caterpillar, right? And I made a caterpillar to remind myself because caterpillars change into butterflies and to remind me that God changes us into something new, right? So to end our time together, I want to share a story of a time in my life when God changed uh, someone and turned them into something new. So when I was 12 years old, I was going to school and there was someone, uh, there was a lot and there were several kids at my school who were not being very kind to me. They were calling me names and and pushing me around and I had a really hard time in sixth grade um, and one of those kids um, in particular um, um, so I had a really hard time in sixth grade it was really hard but years and years later like when I was in high school something amazing happened I got a phone call I got a phone call from, from someone who was a leader at the camp that I used to go to. And they called me and they said, I have a young lady here who went to school with you when you were in sixth grade. And she um, used to bully you, but has since come to know who Jesus was, and Jesus is and accepted him as her Lord and Savior. And when that happened, everything changed for her. And she felt guilty and sad for what she had done. And she wanted to for, to ask me for forgiveness. So we met up and I got a chance to talk to her and hear a little bit of her story. And she was going through some really tough things in sixth grade. And so she started to bully me to make herself feel better. And she asked me if I would forgive her. And you know what? I was scared, but I felt like that God wanted me to forgive her. So I forgave her. And several years later, when we were both adults, she contacted me again um, and asked if we could meet up again. And we met up and it had so much fun hanging out together that we continued to meet. And now, almost two years later, she is one of my best friends. So I can tell you that God can change everything and God can make your enemies, your friends. So I'm going to close this in prayer and then we're going to send you off. So Lord, I thank you for this time together and I thank you that you are a God who changes everything and you're a God that can change the hearts of even the hardest people, Lord. And I pray for these kids, Lord, that they will seek you during this time, Lord. And I pray that you will show them how you change everything, Lord. And I pray that, that you will remind them to keep their eyes open for what you will 
what you are going to do in their lives. Lord, I pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. So I'm going to send you off with a question. I want you to think about how has believing in God or how has learning more about God changed things for you? How has God changed you from a caterpillar to a butterfly? It was so nice to be able to talk with you guys today. I miss you guys so much and I can't wait till I can see you guys in person. Bye, Kingdom Kids!